So let's wait for a few more people to join you, then we'll get started. Uh, let us know how you're feeling today. Wow, awesome, fabulous, good, surprised, inspired. Okay. So which country are you joining from? Let us know which country you're joining from. Ethiopia, Ethiopia. Ethiopia once more. Uh, Uganda. So Ethiopia has the lead. Oh, Tanzania. Presented. Uh, use. Uh, use the link. Okay, somebody just type in the chat section. Uh, you can use the link on the chat uh, to tell us where you're joining from Uganda, another person from Uganda. So, can you see anybody from Kenya? Hello, my chat. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. I can't, um, I'm from Kenya, but I can't access the chat section. Oh, so uh, just one more thing. Uh, if you can't access the chat section, that means uh, you are not signed into the Microsoft Teams and uh, the Microsoft Teams. The way they, mm. So yeah. if you want to get access, if you want access to the chat section, then mm. uh, you'll have to sign into Microsoft Teams using the email address that was added. The email address that you used to register for the demo. Uh, oh, I I must. Uh, oh, I must register there. Yeah. You must oh. sign in. So if oh. you're having problems signing in, uh, just know that uh, the, the email address you're using to sign in must be a mm. Microsoft account. So if, that, if you haven't created a Microsoft account using that email, then mm. first create the a Microsoft account, then sign in. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so thanks everyone for joining. I'm just going to share my slides. Okay, let me know why if you can see my screen, please. Uh, you can confirm if you can see my screen from your end. Wow, screen is visible. Thank you. Okay, thank you once more for joining uh, this event today. So, uh, the bootcamp you are planning for is called the AI Gaming Tournament, the East Africa AI Gaming Tournament. So, personally, my name is Felix Obok. I am a Microsoft LAN Student Ambassador from Kenya. So, together with the other ambassadors, we have been organizing this event. So, I think this is the first largest AI gaming tournament being organized in Africa. And uh, uh, we, have been, we have been happy to be part of the organizing team. Okay, somebody is raising up his hand. Uh, Dejari, you can just unmute and speak if you have a question, or you can just drop, on the, or drop them on the chat. So as I said, this, this is one of the first, uh, uh, the largest AI gaming event we are, we are organizing for the first time in Africa, and I've been working together with a team of eight Microsoft LAN ambassadors. So I would just like to introduce some of them. So we have Anthony. Anthony, if you are present, please, you can unmute and introduce yourself. Hello, Anthony. Okay, I think Anthony has some problem joining. So we have Anthony who is from Tanzania, who is also a Microsoft Launch Date Ambassador. We have Sifa, who is also a Microsoft Launch Date Ambassador from Nairobi University. We have Joshua, who is a Microsoft Launch Date Ambassador from Adenaitimati uh, University. Then we also have Eric, who is a student at uh, Microsoft Launch Date Ambassador from Kenyatta University and uh, Mildred, uh, who is also a Microsoft Launch Date Ambassador from uh, uh, Technical University of Mombasa. So we have other two organizers, that is Azaria and Sugamo from Ethiopia, who will, who will be joining us later. So about uh, we, the Microsoft Launch Date Ambassador. So we as the Microsoft Launch Date Ambassadors, our work is just to organize events and uh, create uh, tech communities within our schools and ensure that students get involved and in tech. So you can apply to become a Microsoft LAN student ambassador. Applications are open throughout the year and uh, uh, people are accepted every quarter. So if you apply now, you accept to get an invite before September, um, I mean before this September. So 
Our goal as Microsoft Launch Data Ambassador is to make a difference with students from around the world. Uh, grow your, you know, if you become one, you can also get a chance to grow your skills, build your reputation as a tech insider, and then you become a leader in your local community and you empower your peers. So you can apply using the link. I'll just drop, uh, I'll, uh, we'll drop a link on the chat section. The AI Gaming and Tournament Bootcamp. So, as I said earlier, we are going to run this bootcamp from 14th of June to the 30th of June 2021. And uh, during, the, during the bootcamp, the bootcamp is going to run for almost two and a half weeks. So the first two weeks will be focusing on the fundamentals of Python. So if you're new, if you're completely new, if you're completely new to Python, then uh, I would recommend that you attend all the bootcamp session. But if you feel you're comfortable with Python, then uh, you, you can decide not to attend all the bootcamp sessions and join us on the last week. Uh, that is uh, uh, the last week where we'll be introducing uh, the participants to the Microsoft uh, Microsoft Azure Computer Vision Platform. And it's during that time that we'll also be issuing the Azure activation keys. So make sure you join us during the last week. So the last week, which will be on, uh, from Monday, we'll introduce you to Microsoft Azure platform and then on Wednesday we will introduce you to the AI gaming platform and on the AI gaming platform uh, we'll teach you how to write your board, get you familiar with the platform and then we'll have our final tournament uh, on Friday that is on 2nd of July 2021. So the goals of the events are quite simple so we want to help you understand the basics of Python so even if you're a beginner uh, everybody is well everybody is, is accepted uh, if you are completely new to writing code, you are going to get started on how to write your first program using, using the Python programming language. And uh, after that, we'll expect you now to uh, get started uh, with the uh, AI gaming platform, introduce it to the basics of AI. So actually, you realize that if the event is not that complex, as long as you have the fundamentals of Python on your fingertips, then you'll be able to uh, compete in the game favorably with others. So it all depends on your Python skills and how you are able to analyze the data that you will be getting. So all these are going to be covered in details, especially during the last week. So if you don't have the schedule, then uh, kindly take a look at the email we sent. We just updated the schedule. So feel free to join us on that day. Now, uh, this is an overview of how we are going to play our game. So. The tournament is actually quite amazing and uh, the game we'll be playing is called the match game. So in this match game, I'll uh, be expected to write your bot, but you'll be competing with other bots on the identifying objects. So what happens is uh, you'll be making use of the Microsoft uh, Computer Vision API and uh, we, you'll be provided with tiles that you'll be expected to turn and uh, the more, the more the more tiles you turn accurately, the more points you get. So you'll be making a request to the other computer, computer vision API uh, with the image that you want to identify the content. So once, for example, you send an image and you send the tile, uh, the content, the Azure computer vision will give you a response that the content of this image, it's uh, maybe an animal, it's a landmark, or it's a text. So based on how accurately you turn your tiles and based on how fast you turn your tiles, then you'll be able to get more points. So this is just like a sample of a, of, a, of a test tournament that you did have some days back, uh, we as the organizers. So you, people will be paired, uh, you'll be paired randomly, and uh, once you're paired randomly, uh, the platform will automatically play your bots uh, and then determine the top four winners. Now, uh, when you're paired, if, uh, if Sometimes you might be paired alone, or sometimes you might be paired with somebody. But uh, during the first rounds, then you, you you must be paired with somebody, and then it will be done randomly. And uh, depending on how many participants or how many bots will be playing on that day, we expect to have very very many rounds. This one we only around one, two, three, four, five, six participants. So that's why we had something to do with four rounds. So on the final day, that's on second of July, or on. Uh, or the day before that is on Wednesday, we'll also have some test tournaments before the final tournament, just to get you ready before you play your final tournament, to know where you where you are in terms of uh, the performance of your board. 
And uh, during the boot camp, we'll also be giving you tips and tricks on how to make your boat much more efficient. That's why I recommend that at least try and attend all the boot camp sessions, especially during the last week. We'll be giving you tips and tips on how to optimize your boat uh, to score more points. So in any case you miss some of these uh, some of these boot conversations, especially during the last week, then uh, you are going to miss you're going to miss uh, uh, some of the tricks on how to uh, make your boat faster. Now uh, by default after the event uh, uh, the air gaming platform is going to list the first four, the top four boards. So that one brings me to my next point that is our sponsors for the event. And our sponsors for the event is Jenga School, uh, Microsoft Africa Development Center, and then the AirGaming platform. So the AirGaming platform have provided us with the platform for us to uh, host this tournament. And then we are also partnering with the Microsoft Africa Development Center, who will be providing us with some swags for all the, I mean, for some of the top participants. And we'll also be giving some random rewards, some, some uh, random swags during the bootcamp, especially those who are going to attend all the bootcamp, uh, I mean all the bootcamp sessions. Then finally we have Jenga School. So Jenga School is a, a software development school. Uh, they focus more on participants of this tournament, so keep in touch and uh, try and attend as many bootcamp sessions as possible. And I know you will uh, definitely like it. So we, before the end of uh, my presentation, I'll be sharing a link to the AI gaming platform registration link. And uh, the first person who is going to register, I mean, the first uh, the first two people are going to register for that tournament, uh, we are going to reward them. We'll be giving them swags at the end of the tournament. So I'll share the link, but then uh, the registrations are going to open today at 7 p.m. in the evening, no, at, uh, at uh, 6 p.m. today in the evening, so that's around that's around one hour, less than one hour from now. So once I share the link on the chat or on my slides, you'll be able to see it. Now, uh, our bootcamp is structures, so we've got amazing people who are going to take us through this bootcamp. And uh, we have, uh, I hope you, all of you did download the schedule, we have Bethany from Kenya, we have Joshua, uh, we have Faith, we have Anthony, we have Sandra, Sifa, and Eric. So I think I saw Anthony in the chat. So Anthony, Anthony is from Tanzania. So maybe Anthony, you can uh, uh, you can say hi. You can unmute yourself and say hi. Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Anthony Mpa from Tanzania. I'm Microsoft Student Ambassador on Alpha Milestone. You are welcome, guys, to this fantastic and awesome event. Okay, thank you, Anthony. So, Anthony will be taking us through our day and I'll be taking us through the fundamentals of Python on how to get started in Python. So, uh, be sure to uh, remain for that session. Now, uh, this is the registration link. This is the registration link, so you can register. So as I said, you can register for the event, but then you have registration for the tournament. So the first people who are going to register for that tournament, the first two people who register for that tournament are going to get some swags uh, that will be issuing before the end of, uh, of I mean, on, on 2nd of July, when we'll be finalizing our boot session. So I'm just going to copy that link and paste it in the chat. Just a minute. So I just dropped the link on the chat. So feel free to register right now. So I want to open that link and maybe take it through on how you can register. So let me open an incognito window. Okay, so here we go. So right now, maximum places available is 256. So make sure you register and be among the first 256 because there are very few slots available. So just click on sign up. So when you click on sign up, you have to log in. I'm already, I'm already logged in. So uh, there is no, uh, I, I already have an account. So all I do is just, you know, all I need to do is to log in. So let me just go to my web browser and try to log in. Just go to airgaming.com. So 
So I have successfully registered for this event. So once you register for that event, it's quite simple. To register for the tournament, you'll come to game. Once you get to the games, click on view tournament. I hope everybody is with me, right? So once you click on view tournament, Uh, you will be able to see the upcoming tournament just a minute. I think I have, okay, right now I can't view the tournament because the tournament is going to start from uh, the, the, the tournament will be available from 18.00, that is 6 p.m. from now. But then let me give an overview of how the tournament looks like. So, just a minute. So when that time comes, just get uh, just get to the games and then view tournament. So you'll be able to view the tournament here and register. So I will say the first people to reserve the tournament, I will going to give them some reward. So it's that simple. Hope to see you then. So I'm going to give it to Anthony. Anthony, are you available? Yes, very some available. Okay, before I give it to Anthony, in case somebody has any question, uh, you can ask so that we answer your question before we get started about uh about the tournament anybody with any question anybody would like to seek any clarification okay so i'm going to give it to anthony who is going to get us started with python programming thank you anthony welcome okay thank you very much okay so okay somebody somebody's asking me uh just a minute anthony somebody's asking me to go through a registration process once more the link i've, I've just shared in the chat you just go to your browser and paste that link on your browser. So once you paste that link on your browser, you'll have to sign up. If it's your first time, you'll have to sign up for the tournament. Once you've signed up for the tournament, uh, you will register and it will tell you have successfully registered for this event. Then to register for the actual tournament, you'll come to games. When you get to games, get to view tournament. Once you click on view tournament, you'll be able to see the actual tournament that you're going to have. So. Right now, the tournament is not visible because uh, it's not yet 18.00. So once it gets to 6 p.m. in the evening, that is East African time, uh, the tournament will be available. So make sure you register by 18.00. Yeah, thank you. Anthony, back to you. Okay, thank you, Felix. Uh, let me share my screen so I can get it started. Samsung. Hambir, uh, see your hand is raised up. Yeah, thank you. But I just want to ask uh, the the chat is not working. Uh, it says chat animation is only available to team member. Okay, so if the chat is not working, then uh, it means you did not sign in when you are joining. So it's quite simple. You need to go to Microsoft Teams and sign in using the email address that you use to register for the IDM tournament. Then just one disclaimer, for you to sign in to Microsoft Teams using the email address you registered, make sure that that email address is connected to a Microsoft account. Yeah. Then Victor, can you just say that I have seen, you can answer Toshi somewhere. Yeah, that's actually true, Victor. So uh, the more you, the more games you play, the more the more points you win. And once you get to around, let me just confirm, around 5 million satoshis, then uh, you can request for withdrawal and you will get, uh, yeah, they will pay in Bitcoin. <laughs> so that's true. Okay, okay. Welcome, guys. Today we are going to start our journey in Python. If you have not yet started or you have started, you are welcome, all guys, to start afresh. So, on today's session, we are going to see on how to start a program Python and how Python is related to other skills and the other technology. So, first of all, I'm going to take you on what is Python. We all know Python is a programming language. You can see here, Python is a programming language. For basically, the purpose of Python is applied in scripting roles, but not only scripting roles, there's multiple application of Python. And another thing you can do with Python rather than 
scripting is web development. Python also used it to develop web with framework like Django and the Frasky. Those are popular Python framework for web development. Uh, another application of Python, you can use Python to develop model and apply the machine learning and gaming. One of the application of gaming is on our event, we can we will use Python on creation of bots to play some games and other usage of Python is robotics. Uh, a lot of many people they are aware of robot Sophia. So one of the application of Python or the language used to develop Sophia is Python. Yeah. Another application of Python is graphical user interface. We have a lot of libraries such as Tinker for Python GUI development and Tinker is fast and easy on development of GUI application. And another application of Python is system programming. In system programming, we can use Python libraries to develop system which have a lot of libraries are uh, well integrated with different operating system such as such as Linux, Windows, and Microsoft. So there is a, a retro work you can do on the integration of your system with different operating system rather than using other languages. So another thing Python can do is internet script scripting. Uh, on internet scripting, you write Python script and you extract or you fetch content from the web browser uh, and you get content. So Python scripts. Uh, another is component integration. Python is easy. Python is is easy to integrate with C or C++ a language which is is familiar used in hardware development systems. So you can integrate easily Python script with those other languages such as C and C++. Uh, also Python is compatible with a lot of database such as MySQL, SQLite. So have a lot of library to develop database. So if you have a passion with web development, no worry of Python to integrate with your database. There's a lot of, of database which are compatible with Python as programming language. So that's our application of Python overall. So once you started your journey in Python, you can ask yourself where to start or where can I write my Python Python codes or other scripts. So we will go through the installation of Python environment on both Microsoft and Windows and Mac OS. Primarily, Python is installed on Unix and, the, and on the Unix operating system, including Linux and Mac OS. So on Windows, if you want to assure of Python installation on your operating system, you can go on your start button and light Python, then the interactive Python on your CMD will pop up and type Python to write your Python code. Uh, so on the installation of IDE or environment to write your Python codes, we can use either VS Code, most of people use VS Code, PyCharm and IDL, and also Jupyter. Jupyter is a, pa is a package found on Anaconda. For myself, I prefer to use Anaconda. You can see the environment you where this notebook I'm displaying is an Anaconda Jupyter notebook. Um, so on the installation of Anaconda on your operating system, you can follow this link here. 
on Windows operating system, you can follow this link. There is all steps in steps of installing your Anaconda on your operating system and how to start it. So don't worry, you can follow this. There is all steps in the well clarified steps for installation of Anaconda. Also for Linux operating system, you can follow this link here so you can install your Anaconda on your operating system. So be assured of what Python version you are using on your operating system. So for my, to view or to see the Python version you are using, you can import CC and view the version. You can see here I'm using 3.85 Python version. Yeah. Okay. Let, let us jump on how to start Python programming. Python is easy and very fun. I like it. So the first part to start in Python is outputting something. Yeah, we all know when we start our journey in programming, we start outputting something like hello world. You you, are, you 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 say hello to the world. You are starting your Python journey. So this is a way how we can output or we can print out your hero world or you print out anything in python by writing print and open brackets then within this you can put something you want to be output or you want to see in the screen oh let me just see erases when i I execute that cell. You can see we are. We can see hero. So this is a way you can write or you can output anything in Python. So especially strings. So that's the way. Are there any question up to that? Hello. Hello. Okay, let us continue. Ah. Anyone with question? Okay. Okay, uh, you can see Francis, your hand is raised up. Francis, you have something to say? Okay, thank you. Uh, take it on, Anthony. Okay, let us move on to creation of a variable in, in Python. Uh, variable are named as a location used to store to store data in memory. Want you have to store something or any kind of data in Python or any programming language, you have to declare variable. So variable are storage which are created on memory. Once we initialize the name of the variable, this, the, the name of the variable, the memory declare a storage for it. So once you initialize, the storage is created. So when once you you assign a variable is going to be stored on that on that on that storage formed on or, or or declared on your memory so how can we how can we declare a variable in python uh, in python we can declare variable by giving by starting giving its name and then assign the value of the variable so in Python, we don't have to define the the nature of the variable, whether it's integer or float or string. Uh, of course, we are all aware of what is integer and what is float. Integer is a real number, and float is a a number with is not a real number. A number with point, and string is an is a name, 
searching the name rightly it says gaming and boolean is either true or false so in in, in what way we can declare variable in Python? So we start with the name of the variable right here, x. Then we assign it the value of the variable. Once we assign integer like this 10, this, the storage declared on the memory have data type of integer. So once we change this 10 up to 10.5, we change the data type of this variable to float. So in in Python, the kind of, vari of variable such as integer, float, and string. So integer is a real number, and float is a number with decimal, and string is a correction of characters such as game. You can write any any string rather than gaming so like f g g so here is a string and this the string should have this quotation so in order to declare a string you should state the name of the variable like here is it and we assign the string the value of the string and for the boolean we state the name of the variable and we assign a boolean statement for boolean is either true or false only then in this way is a sequential way or the basic way of declaring variable in python and there's another option of declaring variable in python such as we assign multiple variables on we are assigning multiple value on variable. So here you can see there's variable A, and we can see there's variable B, and we can see there's variable C. Then separated by comma, and then you put your assignment operator, and then here this five is assigned to A, and this three point two is assigned to B, and this hero is a string is assigned to C. Then when you run this cell, you can see when you print the var when you print A, A has five, is assigned five, and B is assigned three point five as fraud, and C is assigned error. So when you print A, B and C, it will output the value has A killed and B killed and C. So when you run this, it will output what A contained and B contained and C contained. After that, there's anyone with, qu with any question? If no one, we can proceed with how to see the data type of a defined variable. Here we have defined variable X and we have assigned value of 10 so and we are we defined y and we have assigned a value of 1.1 then we are we have defined bs and we have assigned a boolean variable of true then how you can view or to see the the way you have assigned if this x is a really integer or if this 1.1 is this clearly an integer value uh, this will help you if you have either a a large, a large line of code or a notebook with large with many variables so to see which each variable have killed so you can identify by using a function type this function type inside it you can put the name of the variable and it will output the data type of the variable carried on it so we can see this is a and have carried integer of 10 and y have carried integer of have carried the fruit of 1.1 and 
here it's stated as fraud. Then this is Boolean, BS is assigned true. Here we can see it's output, outputted as Boolean and its value is true. Okay, we are all together to that. Okay, we are all together how to declare a variable in Python and how to see its type. Anyone with question with declaration and outputting something in Python? Quiet means we are all together. So let us move to the next part which is control flow. In Python, all other languages have this part called control flow. This control flow is enable programmer to control the, their codes according to the to event or conditions. So here we will see a lot of conditions and in Python, we have three types of control structure. Yeah. Control st structure, default, default one in Python is first called sequential. And there is another type of control structure called selection. Uh, this type of, of uh, control structure is contain some condition or branching or a lot of decisions. Uh, once you have to write a, a, a Python code which contains decision or to want to make a branching, you will use this type of control flow called selection. This contains if, if, else, and if, else, if, and nested if. So we will see how to implement this in, in how to write this. Uh, another type of control structure in Python is repetition. This is we will see on the next session it contains loops, loops and repetition of code on multiple times. Once you have to automate an event which is repeat, have got to repeat on multiple times, you have to use this type of control flow. So let us see how sequence can be implemented and how selection can be implemented in Python. So let us move on. Okay, sequential is a normal or default manner of or behavior of writing codes. It tend to have a good flow, like here we started with comment. This comment can't be executed. Only we put comment in Python to enable a code reader or a programmer to understand what contained in, code, in in the piece of code. We can see here we have a comment which okay, is stated okay. that this is hero. Uh, there's somebody in the question in the chat. Somebody is asking in what situation will I be using decimals? Pardon? Somebody is asking in the comments. Uh, in what situation will I be using decimals? In how, in what, in what situation? In what, yeah, in what situation will I be using decimals? By, asked by Victor. Okay, so I think it's depending on what case you want to use. Okay, on, on using decimal, it depends on what case you want to use. So, if you have com you have to write a program, whether you are computing such as average or you are entering such a, a number which is containing some points, so we, we should use the small point of fraud, as we call. You know, so that it depend on which case you want to implement or to write, to write a code for what purpose. 
Okay. Am I clear to the question you ask? Anthony, I think we are seeing a white screen. Okay. We are seeing a white screen. Okay. Okay, let us continue with the sequential part. So, sequential in Python. Uh, is okay, I think somebody, a, somebody else is. Uh, Anthony, somebody else is sharing his screen. Yeah. It's called Mashauri Isaga. Uh, okay, let me just change the. Okay. Uh, permissions. Let me, let, me, let me just change the permissions of the event. Uh, just a minute. Meeting options. Okay, so Mashauri, maybe you can stop sharing the screen. Anthony, I think you are now free to share your screen. Anthony, uh, you can share your screen. Yeah. Okay. You can reshare your screen. Someone is sharing, is still sharing his screen. Uh, just share your screen and you will override it. Uh, okay. I'm trying to change the settings to restrict the number of people can share the screen. Okay. Now you can see my screen. Yeah, you can see your screen. Okay, let us continue with sequential. A uh, sequential a uh, set of statements which are uh, which tend to follow the sequence of execution of code. A uh, numeric in programming statements tend to be executed from left to right from left to right. So the so the compiler tend to read code from left to right. Let's see this this on this cell. A have assigned twenty and B have assigned ten. So the compiler will read this line contain a assignment of twenty and then we it will move to the next line, which is B, assign 10. After, after, the, after I have read the value of B, it will move to the next line, which is assigned C. C is the sum of A plus B. So what we mean by sequential statement? Sequential statement starts from the above or from the top up to down and for each reading line by line so the sequence of our cell or of this this piece of code it will start reading value of a then b and then move to c c is a product of b once you have interrupted this flow and let me comment this Right, and when you run this cell, it will lead you to an error, or an. It will lead you to an error. Yeah. 
yeah it will prompt you to an error because value g is not declared from the sequence so the sequence starts from above from top to bottom so once you interrupt any piece of line inside your piece of code and the sequence will be interrupted so the sequence will not continue it will result to an error so once we are starting here b g our result will be computed as 20 plus 10 is 30. So that's how the sequence in Python is read. Ah, there's any question about sequence? I think it's clear. So let us move to the decision or decision type of control statement. So in Python, selection or decision is also known as branching because it results into branch into branching. So from from multiple conditions, you have to to define branch in which state on what decision it your code will move and yeah and what to move on with on what decision so on selection decisions the selection allow to program or test several conditions and execute instruction based on which condition is true so the, the execution of of a block it depend whether you, the condition have specified is true or false whether the the whether the defined condition is true or the condition has met, the piece of code below it will be executed. Rather than that, it will not be executed. So in selection, we will see a simple if, how to implement simple if, and how to, to implement if else, how to implement a nested if, and how to implement a if else if. So this nested if is if within if. So we state if else, but within if else, we, we add up another condition, which is if else. So let us see how to implement simple if. Simple if is having only a single condition. So like here, you state your condition and then from if this condition is true the code below it or inside the, the condition it will be executed and if the part of code is not if the condition is not met the part of code will be not executed and the pro and the program will be will 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 will, will over will skip will skip the part of code and execute and end the program. That's simple if is implemented on Python. How that's how if condition is logically implemented on Python. So that is a logical if condition. So let us see how to implement it. So what if you ask it to program Python program that will identify if the number is even or not you have said you have to set a condition on your piece of code or your on your condition so here we have defined a variable called n and we have assigned the value of 10 then from this value of 10 we be We have defined if and the state our conditions. We all know in order to in order the number to be even, the modulus of that number should be equal to zero. The modulus of that number when you divide by two is equal to zero. So if this condition is made, 
our code will print this statement. If this condition is not met, our code will not print this condition. Let us see if this, if, when we run this code, it say n is even number. So what if we put odd number here? Let us put five and we execute a piece of code. Our code will not output anything. That's because the condition is not met and our code is keep that block of code up to terminate the, the program. So here is how you can, you can implement a single if in Python. So am I clear up to that point? I think there is someone sharing. Okay, Anthony, I just muted everyone so you can unmute yourself. Okay. I'm asking if there's any question up to implementation of single if in Python. Anyone with question? You can raise your hand or unturn yourself and unmute yourself and speak out. Fiona has a hand up. Fiona, you can unmute yourself and speak. Um, what does the percentage mean? The sign, the percentage this, sign. Okay, Th this is a moderate, the moderate sign, which means when you define, when you divide a value of n with two, it must give you equal to zero, no remainder on it. So re, let me write a simple, a simple example. When you divide five, we divide by two. We are likely to see the answer is two point five, right? Yeah, the answer is two point five. So what this sign mean, or we call it modulus, it will only it will only show us if a number is divided by two, it will result us into real number, not a fraud number. So if we divide by 10, the modulus is zero. There's no remainder on this, on this program or on this execution so when you divide 10 by 2 it's result into 5 and when you divide a, an old number with 2 it result not on real number it is that on this remainder will result on it yeah so this modulus is an indication of what remains of when a number you divide by 2 so if it's remained by 0 that is an even number. If not, if the remainder is not zero, that number is not a real number. It is not an even number. So, have you understand the usage of this modular sign? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let us move to if else. So we can see, we can take a logic from this piece of code, what we have completed. When you are writing a piece of code, you might consider the readability uh, of the code. A question for Pirawal. Pirawal has a question, Anthony. Okay. Why is there Pirawal two equals? I will come up again. 
Why did we use two uh, equal signs? The two equal sign. Two equal signs means equal. Equal is something. So the remainder of this condition is equal to zero. That means of equal. We compare with the result of this operation or this condition. Am I clear to you? Hello? Yes, it's clear. Thank you. Okay. So, I was talking about the logic on this previous cell, cell, cell we have seen. So, once you are writing a piece of code, you should consider the piece of code should be simple to read and should be informative. So, when you look on this piece of code, we have stated our condition is is n modulus of 2. But what if this condition is not met? That's how we result on if else. So once this condition is not met, we should state what the program should do for the customer. So this is, you can take a, a logic on once you have uh, logged in on your own on either a system. So what if your password is not met or is not matched well? So the program will result you with a message. So that's the simple logic of using if else. So do this for this condition. If this condition is not met, do that. So this will be more informative than this. So let us see this if else. So on if else, in turn, on, on first condition. So if that condition is true, we execute body. And if that condition is not is not true, we execute S body. So if board will be executed if the condition is met and else board will be executed if the condition is not true. So the implementation of this if else is here. So we have n, we have, we have assigned the value of 5, and we have condition. If this n, if this, this value of n is, if this value of n is even number, it will print this part of code. So this is a part of if. And if the modulus of n is not equal to 0, or is not even, we, we, uh, we execute this part of code. So once this condition n modulus of 2 is met, it will come up to the board of if, which is print is even. If that condition is not met, it will come to the else statement, which is n is odd. So let us change the value of n and we light up 10. Our answer is even. So 10 made the condition of, of n modulus of 2 result equal to 0. So that's why this part is executed. And once the condition is not met, it will come on the other part of the of else and will output us an message n is an odd or an odd number. So that's how the logic of whether you're, you're configuring a logic on a system. So once you, con you, you configure the, to match the password of the user and, and the condition is not met, and the condition is not met, you should configure to output a message which will inform the user that your condition is not met and try to, to 
to write up your password your password in a correct way okay up to that point there is any question if you have any question you can unmute yourself and speak up The session is clear. Okay, if if it's clear, let us move to the next 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 step. If on the next on the next step, if we write if within if. So before executing this part, let's say before executing this part. We can employ or implement another if within this part of code. So how this can be executed? On next if we start from the top of our program, then we come on the condition on the if condition. If the the condition within if is met or is true, the part of code to be executed or the, there is a nested condition to be checked. So here we check how we, we check the condition on two on, on two solutions. There's first condition and there's second condition. So where is this where is this condition to be seen? So the first condition it will be seen as a as a top of block of if then within the block of if we implement another if let's say we take this part of if and paste inside this that's how That's how the nested if look like. It's if within if. So we implemented the another if inside the if conditions. So let us see how to implement it. So when this condition is met, it will execute the program or piece of code inside the second if. And when this condition is not met, the program will come on the on its fourth side and exit out of the code. And when the first condition is not met, means is false, it will come ex ex execute the else piece of code. So let us see how to implement that. So we have assigned three variable A, B, C. We have assigned ten, and we have we have assigned we have assigned five on. A and we have assigned 10 on B and you have assigned 15 on C. So we implemented nested if here to check if the condition of a large number or maximum number is met, the part of code inside is, is to be executed. So we check here, we have you to use equivalent uh, greater than operator, which is be like this so to compare these two numbers so we are comparing the var of a and var of b so if the var of a is greater than b this part of code will be executed right so if this part if the var of a is less than b means this part will not be executed the program will jump to the next condition which is error if on this error if we see that the the condition if is b greater than c so if b is true greater than b this part will be executed and what if this part is not true? 
the, our program, we will jump to the next part, which prompt C is greater than B. So on this program, we are trying to, to, to output which number is greater than this or so from the conditions we can see five a have value of five and b have value of ten so five is less than ten so means from this condition is false so this part of code will be will not be executed and we, the program will jump on the next part which is elif on this elif we compare b is greater than C. On this part, B is value of 10 and C have value of 15. So B is still less than C. So this part will not be executed. And our program remained with one condition, which is else. So it will come to terminate the, uh, it will come to execute this part of code and terminate the program. So once you change this condition, let us assign here 5 and let us assign here 15. So the, our program tells us value of A is greater among all of this. So A is greater than C. It comes to this. A is greater than B. It comes to this part of code. And then once once you are in this part of code, you compare A and C. A have greater value than C. Also, it will print the value of A is big. That's how our program result to A is big. Up to that point, if there is anyone with question, you can unmute yourself and speak up. Uh, hello. So I'm trying to register for this tournament, but I'm being told to put in a file. So I give the file a name, then it tells me it's an error card. So what could be the problem? You are trying to register with... Okay, so uh, once Anton is done, I'll be sharing my screen and sharing the whole process. Okay. Is that, is that okay? Is that okay, uh, the person who asked? Yeah, could I get a benefit of doubt swag? Because I tried to to be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the first one. Sorry for that. Okay. Okay, can I continue? Yes, Anthony. Do you want to say something, Felix? Just... I'm saying, just continue. Okay, okay. Okay, if there is no question up to this part, let us move to if, else, if. Ah, if, else, if contain only three parts. On if else if statement, we use condition to execute a statement on a block statement. So we can see here from the first condition to test, then if it's false, it will come to the next tariff. And if it's true, it will execute its void. And if these conditions force it will come to the else so we will have only three parts so we 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 test the condition of if if it's true and if this condition will be true this part will be executed and if what if is not what no what, what if this this condition is not met the our program will jump to test this condition so once the condition is met, it will print this statement. And what if these two, both these two condition both are not met? So our pro our program it will jump to execute the last section. 
So that's how if elif else work. So we have var of x assigned 15 and we have var of y assigned 12. Uh, so we are trying to compare if x, if var of x is equal to y, probably it, it will print this statement if this condition is met. So from our values, they are not equal. So this statement or this condition will be not met. So means this statement, this block will not be executed. So then we test on the second condition. Value of x should be greater than y. So and value of x is 15 and value of y is 12. So x is, is greater compared to y. So that's why it will print this statement. x is greater x is greater than y and on the s part it will it it will not be executed since this condition is made after completing on this condition it will ex exit the program so that's how the pro this program work let's try to match this two value we assign x12 and y12 so probably from the analysis we the the part of code should be executed is this both value icon that's how it will be printed. so it's printed both value icon since the value of x and the value of y are equal so if this value of y will be raised will be raised either one or two so it will come on the next x is greater x is greater than y yeah and if x is raised it will print on else x is less than y that's how if else if work so there's any question up to that Any question with control from? Hello, guys. So, if there is no Fiona, question, Fiona, you can unmute yourself. Fiona has a question. Yeah. Um. While I was while I was uh, typing the if statement, it sort of said there is a uh, expected and indented block. What does that mean? Indented block. You are trying to type on your Jupyter notebook or your ID. Hello. Yes, yeah, like the identific and identification error, then expected an indented block. While well, I was uh, typing. That's so that you you maybe have skipped the value of the variable which or, or which you included on the block of if or can you share your screen so i can see let me stop sharing my Can you share your screen? You can't see my screen. Not yet. Okay, uh, Anthony, I think we can see our screen. Anthony, are you seeing our screen? Not yet. Felix, from your side, you can see the screen.
Yeah, I can see her screen, Anthony. I've just shared a screenshot of uh, her code and uh, pasted it in the chat section. Uh, have you seen what I've just sent? Uh, Okay, the screenshot yeah. have you pasted? Okay, let me see. Have you seen the screenshot at all? No, I'm looking on the chat. I see the screenshot you have sent. So what okay. have what she have tried to write is a if broke and the print statement not just stated on inside step inside one tab on if broke so you should step up or click tab on this second print statement to be inside a tab Wait, like how? Okay. Okay, let me show you. Share my screen and okay. Can you see my screen? Hello, can you see my screen? Yes, okay. Let me add another cell here. So when you are declaring a variable, let's say is A, B, in A, we assign a value of 90. We assign a value of 90. So in B, we assign a value of nine of 80. So when you start writing your if, you state if, then you state your condition, you put full call. Then when you enter, there is a tab skipped from where if st if statement have started and there is one tab inside so then you can write another another statement or block you can write in, inside the block of if am i clear to your what you are getting on, on your program do you see this empty part here from the starting? Yes. Yeah, that's the problem. So w w once you are writing if statement on the block of if, sh you should state one tab. And when you are writing on either Visual Studio or Python or, or Anaconda on Jupyter, or always this this tab is by default you can see when after uh, here you can see when i hit um, enter yes i think maybe there's also something i'm seeing on her code uh if x is equal to y on line one i think i can see like uh, there's no space between x and x like it's if x everything is combined so maybe that might be the reason also it's not. Is that you can should that can that be a reason why uh, 
that she's also getting that air. I think it's, it's, it's the arrange, right. arrangement of if Yeah. So maybe if she can use Jupyter notebooks, that might be a good idea. Yeah. Anyone with question? I will share the notebook and also okay. I attached here the link of some website or great resources of starting your Python journey. So you can click this link and go and start running Python. So Anthony, if you can drop the link on the chat, I think that would be a great idea. Uh, okay, so I'm going to, because of time, I'm going to share my screen and uh, and take you through the registration process. Uh, sorry, sorry, I think I shared the wrong screen, just a minute. I shared the wrong monitor. Right, can I okay. ask something before that? Yes, just pick up. Uh, I don't think we are able to see the chart. Uh, I think because we, we are not in the same organization as you guys, so we are not able to see the chart. Okay, so we are very sorry for that. So, okay, so that I'm, uh, let me let me uh, drag this other window on this other side and maybe show you how to access everything once we're done with the meeting. So, I'm just going to drag this other window to this other monitor. Just a minute. So, I hope you can see my Microsoft Teams, right? So, no, 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 not this one, sorry. Let me pull that one down. Just a minute. Okay, I want to maximize it. Okay. So, uh, once you get to Microsoft Teams, once you sign in using the email address that we gave you, you have to sign into Microsoft Teams. So it's quite simple. You can either install Teams, Team Microsoft Teams, or on the desktop application on your Windows OS or on your Linux or on your Mac. Microsoft Teams is available on all the platforms. Then uh, you'll have to sign in. You have to sign in using the email address that you use to register for uh, the iGaming platform. So once you once you added to Microsoft Teams, I hope you received an email that maybe I you added to Microsoft Teams by Felix or Mook or Anthony or Sifa or Bethany. So once you log in, you will be able to see AI gaming Mr. Fifa and James Tokujo Live. Uh, this is a team on Microsoft uh, Teams. So once you click on that, uh, if you get to the general, uh, to the general channel, these ones you call them generally, uh, you'll see the current meeting that you're having, that is the AI gaming Mr. Fifa Bootcamp. And then if you click on the drop down, uh, you'll be able to access the chat. So after this, you should be able to access. So the reason why you are not accessing the chat is because you are attending the meeting as a guest and uh, you are not logged in into this specific tenant. So you are allowed to log in into this tenant for you to access even the recording. So the recordings are going to be posted under files. If you get to the channel, uh, general channel, get to files, you will see the recordings. So this is the schedule. So in any case, you want the latest schedule, you always find it here. And then inside this folder, you are going to upload all the recordings. Then the rest of the bootcamp sessions are going to be found in this bootcamp channel. So when you go to the bootcamp channel, I will see all the sessions have already been scheduled. So it's a matter of you joining. I will be uh, I will be rescheduling them so that you get the latest calendar invite. That is for those people who joined uh, who joined late. Yeah. So. Is the question answered? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, and just one more thing. For those people who are joining, once you added this, this channel called Teams Join Request, please don't respond to anything uh, inside this channel. Don't even visit this channel if you're not admin. Uh, if you do that, you'll be interfering with the registration process. Don't click on anything inside this channel. Uh, thank you. So I think I'll just get back to my uh, to my browser. So. Assuming the link that I did send, I hope, uh, let me just copy that link once more and drop it in the chat. So this is the link. And uh, just open your browser and paste the link. 
if you load such a page and it will tell you that you are registered for the tournament AI game in East Africa as uh, the book come from 14th June and then the final tournament uh, it's going to happen on uh, on 2nd of July so you'll have to get to games and then you'll click on view tournament so when you click on view tournament uh, let me give it some time to load you'll see this tournament this is the final tournament that you'll have so far we're having one person who has registered so i'm just going to edit and uh, postpone the registration by around uh 30 minutes so that we can all start on a fair ground <laughs> i think that will be fair so let me just edit the time and let me set the decision to start at uh uh okay are you sure who is not seeing my screen francis mudoni i hope everyone else is seeing my screen can you guys confirm if i see my screen you can just uh, drop a reaction if you can see my screen so let me say the, the boot camp to start from 1835 that is five minutes from now right now let me just start it from 30. yep so let me click submit that's when the decisions are going to open yeah so by default right now it's going to be an available so i claim ah okay so i think i'll have to create a test tournament to show you how to do it so just a minute create a tournament i'll have to create test and show you and then uh open registration right now and start tournament uh let me put it to tomorrow and then let me click on submit so uh yep so if i press this page you should see the test east africa right so i say once you open that link let me test it once more So if you, if you land in this page, if you haven't registered, you'll have to register, sign up using your email address, then you'll get to the game tab, you can then get to the view tournaments. So when you click on the view tournaments, it's going to load up all the upcoming tournaments. So the, the other tournaments are going to be available from uh, seven minutes from now. So just click on it to register and then it will tell you to register for this tournament. So it will ask you to select a file. So this file is your bot. So it takes some time before it loads uh, your available file. Okay, you're saying you can't see the link I've shared. Let me just drop the link once more in the chats. And send. So I've just shared the link once more. So it will ask you to select the bot. So by default, if you're me, you, will, you won't be having any bot, so you can create a new file. So you can see I have some bot over here, for example, Felix MS bot, and then I can click on register. And once I register, I, will, I shall have confirmed to participate in this event. So uh, if you want to create your first bot, it's quite simple. We'll be getting into details on how to do all this registration process and how to modify your bot. But now uh, you can just come to the editor. We'll get back to the editor window, click on editor. And then once that page loads, this is where you'll be programming your bots after you have installed the fundamentals of Python. Let's give it some time. I think my internet is misbehaving. Uh, it has opened the Felix and Mets bot. So this is my, my bot that I've been playing with on the platform. So you'll just click on new and then select the Microsoft API template.py. Yeah. So once you click on that, you'll have to give it a name. Then click on yes. So once I click on that, you'll see test Felix over here and by default it's open. But then you can get back to the link that we had and then try and register once more, which will be able to load uh, the border, the file I just created. So let me give it some time, it's fetching my files. Yeah, so you can see we have the Felix MS, no, Felix test bot, and then I click on register. So once you click on register, I'll be able to see who has registered for the tournament, yeah? So it's that simple. Yeah, so right now I'm going to have submitted my bot. So the advantage of submitting your bot early, you can sub, uh, in, any, in any case, uh, you want to be available to join the final tournament. You don't have to be, a, uh, you, you don't have to be available for the final tournament. If in any case you'll be busy, uh, you can just get to the editor. At any time, just get to the editor, work on your bot, uh, practice it. If you want to test if your bot is working, you can just click on run. 
and then you see how your bot plays uh, against uh, the in-house bot. So let me click on run. I uh, think there is a problem somewhere. Well, that's the test, but let me get to the Felix and this bot. And click on run. You'll be able to see how your bot plays against the house bot. So the house bot is the default bot that uh, it's available for you to test your code with. So you'll be testing and seeing how many points you're in. So I can see Digiflex Edge has zero, zero points, the house bot has zero points. Yeah. So it's that simple. So you, you can work on your bot early. As long as you have registered your bot to participate in that tournament, you can work on it, test it. And when that day comes, you'll be able to play. Before the before the actual event, we'll have a series of tests that is from the last on the uh, on the last week on Wednesday, where we'll be taking you through the AI gaming platform. Uh, we'll be we'll be creating some test tournaments so that you can test your bot in readiness for that final day, so that you see how your bot works. So it's that simple. Uh, anybody with any question? I can see Mulitu, Maurice. I have your hand up. As you can, we are free to ask a question. Uh, sorry, like um, I think I sent an email saying that I could change my email because I do not have a Microsoft account for the email I used for registration. So, like, oh, I sent an email. okay. So, okay, if you did send an email, uh, okay, but I haven't seen any new email. Okay, so okay. okay. No, I sent after registration. I think two weeks ago. Or okay. last week. Two weeks ago. Okay, then just send it once more to the. Uh, the, to our email address, the email address for the organizers. Yeah, I hope you have access. So you can just inbox me right now on Microsoft Teams and I'll change your email address. Yeah, okay, sure. VK, VK, you want this up and winning. You can, okay, let's, uh, VK, you can go first. You can ask your question. Oh, yeah. So I've created my bot. Then <laughs> while trying to register on your test yeah. file, it yeah. told me that there's a syntax error. So how do I solve that? Uh, it's telling me there's a syntax error. Uh, did you modify something on that, on the, on the code? No, I haven't touched anything completely. OK, that's weird. I think you can delete that button and try to create another one. OK. Yeah. Uh, what about Winnie? So the other tournament is going to be visible uh, two minutes from now. Uh, two minutes from now, you will see the uh, the final tournament. Uh, Winnie, you can unmute and ask your question. Um, sorry, I missed out on what you were explaining because I wasn't I wasn't seeing your screen. Okay, so are you in a position? Are you seeing your my screen right now? No. Wow, that's weird. Uh, who else is watching my screen? Uh, Winnie, you are not seeing my screen, right? Yes, yes. Oh, uh, can you try leaving the meeting and joining again? I think that might help because once you have joined, you should be able to see my screen. Anthony, can you please confirm if you can see my screen? Or Bethany, can you please confirm if you guys can see my screen? I am on the uh, AI gaming tournament page. I can see. No, Felix, I can't. I can't see your screen yet. Wow. Uh, Anthony can't see my screen. That's strange. Uh, Bethany can see my screen. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Okay, uh, maybe we need, once you get to this page, uh, okay, because you're in the meeting, I don't know how that's, uh, why you're not seeing the screen. Uh, I, one thing I know that's happening, once you click on, uh, once you join a meeting, you can see it by default, it opens another window. So make sure you are not on this window, but uh, you are on the window for the meeting. Let me just drag this other window on top. Uh, you should be able to see something like this. Are you seeing something like this, Winnie? Uh, something um. like this. Something like what? Now you know I can see what you're showing. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you should see like uh, people. Okay, are you able to see people in the meeting? Yes. Wow. Maybe uh, I'll just leave then come back. Yeah, and then if in any case you fail to see my screen, uh, you can, you'll get access to the meeting recordings. Once you're logged into Microsoft Teams, 
you just go to the general okay. channel under the files tab mm -hmm. it's, uh, you will see all of our recordings yeah i'll upload, upload, upload the recording immediately or uh when you get to youtube uh just look for microsoft lunch date ambassadors mm -hmm. Plan student ambassadors, Kenya. Yeah, just look for Microsoft Plan student ambassadors, Kenya. Actually, you see it's uh, one of the first links. So I'm also going to drop the link and we'll be sharing. I'll be uploading the video immediately after this meeting. Yeah. Now, uh, somebody has his hand raised up. Uh, who is next online? Uh, we have Ibra Ibrahim. Ibrahim, you can unmute and speak. Uh, hello, sir. I joined this meeting as a guest and I can't access uh, all files and all necessary things of the meeting. Could you add uh, to this meeting to access all details of the meeting? Okay, uh, if you joined as a guest, uh, have you, did you receive a meeting, an, an email that you have been added to Microsoft Teams? An email like that? Uh, no, I received a message uh, to only link to join this meeting. Okay, then that's weird. Oh, let me just drop the email address and maybe you can share your email address. Okay, uh, your email address uh, on this. Uh, you can send an email to this link. Let me share that. Uh, just a minute. Uh, I think I sent an email to DG Flex at student ambassadors just Okay, that's okay. Um, I'll get it and I'll reply to you as soon as I can. So if you have any concern, you can share, uh, you can reply to this email. Okay, uh, this next online. Uh, so maybe even uh, one more thing I can say that once you once we add you to Microsoft Teams, we'll let you know, but then once after adding you, you have to sign in into Microsoft Teams for you to access the files. And during our next meeting, remember you have to log in if you want to access the chats. Yeah. Okay. Uh Khaled Faiz, you can ask your question. Just one more thing okay, before okay. I ask your question. Uh, hey, um I'm still stuck in trying to uh create to log in to the team's account okay so what problem are you facing um still under the guest have a gmail account try to open it with the teams but still under the guest can you show me how to do it probably uh like you are on the guest and then yeah, so I can't see the charts, but you told us uh, there's a way you have to do it. Yeah, so what I'm saying is after this, uh, after this meeting, uh, mm -hmm. you just go to Teams, just get to teams.microsoft.com, right? Okay. And uh, sign in using the email address you use to register for the AI gaming tournament, right? So once you okay. get to teams.microsoft.com, you have to sign in using that email address. If you are having problem signing in, then it means that the email address you are trying to sign in with is not registered uh, with a Microsoft account. So you must be having a Microsoft account with that email. Uh, in any case, you're going to change your email, just send us a, 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 a request and we'll be really happy to do that. Yeah. So uh, the final thing, uh, for those who are good in Python, uh, those who uh, are good in Python and they don't want to maybe attend all their boot camps, you can start working on your bot as early as now and uh, uh, register it for the final tournament. So it's quite simple. Just come and look for AI Gaming Student Ambassadors. Just search for this AI Gaming Student Ambassadors. Uh, no, AI Gaming, just a minute, gaming.com. Yep. Just look for AIGaming.com and you'll, you'll see something like this. Uh, just a minute. I'm going to share the link. I want the exact playlist. Let me get you guys the playlist. AIGaming student. Yeah. So, uh, this is the video tutorial. 
Uh, this series of video tutorials has everything you need for you to participate in this tournament. So these are the actual things we will be teaching you uh, during the last week. So at your own time, if you feel you are comfortable in Python and you need to start working on your board as early as possible, uh, you can start watching this series of videos. So I've also shared the link on the chat. Now, after this meeting, I'll also be creating a PDF document with all the instructions on how to register your board and uh, how to sign into Microsoft Teams. So just to stay in chat and then I'll also be sending an email to everyone uh, with the details. Yeah. Now, uh, somebody's asking, uh, the houseboat always wins, the house never loses. No, uh, once you have uh, worked on your bot, you should be able to defeat the houseboat. Yeah, the houseboat is... Hello, so my name is Stephen, and I'm the COO with AI Gaming. I'm yeah, going so to introduce you to the AI... Uh, Maurice, I just muted you, sorry for that. I uh, could not submit code due to the syntax error, except there's a syntax error in the code, I couldn't register. Victor, okay, so... Okay, 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 Victor. Uh, there's a syntax. Victor, did you try creating another another template? Because I see a number of people have registered for the tournament. If there's a syntax error, then it means you, uh, you know, it somehow you uh, modified uh, the content of the file. So you just try and create a new template and register for the tournament. So right now we have eight people have registered. Then, okay. Uh, okay. G G trauma thirty three. Are you still having the problem of uh, registering your bot? You want me to take you through once more? Okay. So I did share link on the chat early. Uh, sometimes back. Let me just get the link. Uh, just a minute. I get the link. Uh, where is the link? Okay, let me get the link. So I'm going to paste the link on the chat once more. Some time, I think my internet is having some problem. Okay, just a minute. Okay, so once you open the link, uh, you will see something like this maximum places available 256, and you ha you'll have to sign up if it's your first time. For example, if I open it on an incognito window, it will ask me to sign up. That is because you are visiting this site and you haven't been registered, so you'll have to sign up. Once you sign up, you'll have to log in. So once you're logged in, you'll get to the game. Uh, you'll get to the games. Once you get to the games, you'll click on View Tournament. When you click on View Tournament, it's going to show you all the tournaments that you have right now. So right now, the, we have nine people who have registered for the tournament. We have nine people who have registered for the tournament. So it's that simple. So once you get to here, you can just click on any of anywhere, like for example, at this, you can just click here, and then it will tell you to register for the tournament. When you click on register for the tournament, you'll have to select your file. So you'll give it some time for it to load all your test files, and then click on register. So it's that simple. And if your bot is maybe having some problem, maybe due to syntax error or kind of things, uh, you will have to, you can create a, a simple random template with py because the Microsoft template API requires you to have uh, an API key for you, for example, it requires you to have an API key for you to participate in the tournament. So you can create a, uh, you can create, I mean, you can, you, you can create the simple random template. This one will not require you to have the API key, but uh, with this one, uh, you won't be able to defeat the housebot. You cannot defeat the housebot if you're using the Microsoft API template. So at this point, you'll be able to like analyze, you'll have the freedom to analyze your code and uh, make improvements with the hardware necessary by following the uh, everything on this tutorial. 
Now, uh, there are also a number of resources on the side pane. Um, there's also a number of resources on the tab pane. Uh, if you click on this education symbol on the right, you will see uh, note that uh, this book will you'll scroll and get to the Microsoft API, Microsoft Match Game. So when you click on the Microsoft Match Game, it will all the documentation about that game are available right here so you can go through it one by one so just know that right now you are you, you want to be able to defeat the houseboat without the api key because we'll be activating the microsoft azure accounts we, i mean we'll be showing how to actually get uh, uh how to get your azure for students accounts uh during the last week but for now i think i can give you guys this api key I can share maybe with you this guy API key and uh, you can practice at your own time as a way to get your own. Yeah, so that's all from my side. Uh, Abraham, Abraham, uh, 0913. Uh, yeah. You can admit and ask a question. Yes, yes. Okay. Is there another Abraham? Is a question? Okay, how are you doing? Yes, I'm doing fine. Please. Uh, so are we supposed to know all about AI gaming stuff or should we allocate that time to get familiar with Python or get some intermediate? So right now, uh, you what you have to focus on is getting familiar with Python. During yeah. the last week, we'll take you through how to write your bot. So you will realize that uh, uh, when the match game is the simplest game ever on the AI gaming platform and uh, you won't need any uh, any prior knowledge on AI because the Microsoft Computer Vision will be doing, will be handling everything for you, right? You'll be sending the request to the Microsoft Computer Vision API. For example, uh, before you before you turn your cards, you love to know you love, you love to know like the content of that card. For example, is this an animal? Does this image contain a uh, cat? So what happens? You send the request to the Microsoft Azure Computer Vision API platform, and then it will give you a response that this tile is an animal and this other tile is a landmark. So for example, if you get like these two are landmark, then you turn both of them at once, then you get your points, right? So not much, no, no, no prior knowledge of AI is needed. So you realize that for you to win this game or get many points, everything depends on how you are going to opt, uh, how you are going to analyze the responses that you give and how you are going to improve this code. All the templates have already been provided. And if you follow, uh, this video tutorial step by step you'll find that everything has been provided yeah so i've already given you uh a sample api keys that you guys can use to make requests as you as you uh, as you train your bot so remember to train your bots to win as many points as possible uh you can win up to ten thousand points if you go to youtube and just look for ai gaming uh events you'll see for example if you look for ai gaming india or UK, uh, you'll see a number of them, and you'll see bots that are winning up to 8,000 points. And this is because these guys, uh, these guys were able to optimize their code, right? So it's that simple. Anyone have any question uh, before we end today's meeting? Yeah, uh, I got one more of a general question. Yeah. Uh, what kind of certificates or anything uh, we get out of the, uh, after we finish the tournament or the program okay. in general? Uh, if you participate in this tournament, if you will be among the top two uh, winners for the tournament, you will get a full sponsorship from Jenga School. Jenga School is a software development school that focuses on AI and the designs. So they are, inter they are international, so whether you are from uh, Ethiopia, Tanzania, uh, you'll get the scholarship. Then for the rest of the participants, anybody who participated on the AI gaming tournament, uh, you will get a 20% discount in any case you decide you want to join Jenga School. Yeah. So if you'd like to know more about Jenga School, I'm going to share the link. Uh, let me just share the link to the form. You can fill that form and you'll be contacted with more details. That is if you'd like to know more about Jenga School, or yeah. So just a minute, I share link to that form, Jenga School. So 
Ocean. Yo te lo arreglo. Copio. Okay. El name or bot ID contiene el file que me quiero found. Uh, Patrick Jim Palola. Okay. I maybe can unmute yourself and ask your question clearly. I can't hear you. I, I, can, I think I'm not understanding your question. Oh, Khaled Faiz. Uh, you can admit and ask a question, Khaled. Uh, Khaled. Um, trade, uh, I tried to bring again the team, sir, but it has failed. So I've just sent you an email to where you send me the invitation again. Is that okay? Oh, Khaled, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'll get to um, take a look at those emails once you're done with the meeting. Uh, Brian? Sure. Uh, ben, you have a question? Are you going to unmute yourself and ask? Pardon? I don't find the ID to join the game. Uh, you don't need an ID. Uh, I said, once you get to the AI gaming platform, and you have logged in, you have registered using the link I sent. Get to the games tab and then click on view tournaments. If you click on the games tab and click on view tournament, you will see the games. You can see right now we have 14 who have registered. So actually, I'm going to, I'm just going to cancel the chest in East Africa. So let me just cancel that. So for you to register, you have to click on this tick, and then it will uh, you register by default. Yeah. So you don't need an ID to join. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Is there anyone else with this, any question? Uh, Abra, uh, uh, we are we are ready past time, and we need to hang up the call. <laughs> Is there certification of completion? Okay. So we are looking into that. So we'll get back to you uh, with more information on that. And does that mean we are not creating a bot from scratch, just optimizing the existing one? Okay, so this is just like a template code on how to get started, just like a template code. But you realize if this template code cannot, sometimes it can't defeat the housework. That one tells you that uh, you still have to do a lot of work and uh, You'll see that the, by, by the template code, you'll only score a maximum of like 30 points, not 20 points. But if you optimize your code, you're able to score up to 8,000, thousands of points, or even 10,000 points. Okay, sorry guys, uh, there's some noise in my background. So remember to log into Microsoft Teams and uh, you, uh, using the, uh, the link that was sent to your email. And then get to this team, you'll see something like AI game in East Africa. And then in the general channel, get to the file tab. I'll be uploading the recordings inside here once I'm done with the uh, editing. And then the rest of the bootcamps will be found on the AI Gaming Bootcamp uh, uh, channel. So inside there, you can see we have all the all the upcoming recordings. So it's just quite simple. So remember to join us on Wednesday. We'll be meeting on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday every week. And on the last week. I uh, really have our test tournament. Unfortunately, Jenga School was not able to join us today, but then uh, we're going to be joining us during the last week. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for joining.